Welcome to the History, Law, and Justice Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Buckner, a lawyer and amateur historian. I will explore with you legal issues affecting governance, society, and culture of the United States and other civilizations, both past and present, using history as my guide. Before we begin the episode, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, you're invited to share your thoughts on today's topic or anything dealing with history and the law in the comment sections below or on our social media platforms. On May 21st, 2020, the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit, in a rare move, directed District Court Judge Emmett Sullivan, who was hearing the criminal case against former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, to respond by June 1st to Flynn's petition for writ of mandamus. The writ, if issued, would compel Judge Sullivan to grant the Justice Department's May 7th motion to dismiss the criminal charges against Flynn. The Court of Appeals cited in its order Federal Rule of Criminal Procedure 48A and, most importantly, its 2016 decision in United States v. Falker Services which held that decisions to dismiss pending criminal charges is squarely within the discretion of the prosecutor. In today's episode, we will gain an understanding of what is a writ of mandamus and who created this odd-sounding judicial command. Our review takes us back in time to England after the Norman Conquest, which was a military takeover of the country by William Duke of Normandy and symbolized by his decisive victory at the Battle of Hastings in 1066. Prior to the Norman Conquest, a writ was a common law order issued by a court or other authority in the name of a sovereign, and that required the performance of a particular act. The writ was in writing and sealed by the authority to prove that it was authentic. After the Norman takeover, and the establishment of a strong monarchy, and continuing into the 17th and 18th centuries, the writs issued by the crown eventually incorporated all other inferior writs, and they were said to be sent and arose from the prerogative of the king or queen. These writs were delegated to a government official or courts, and were based in common law, and not the law issued or passed by a legislature or other deliberative body. Mandamus was a type of judicial writ issued from the court of King's Bench or Queen's Bench in the name of the sovereign at the request of an individual whose interests were alleged to be adversely affected by the failure of an official to perform a required duty and was not ordinarily granted when an alternative remedy was available. The writ was never issued when the official possessed a legal discretion to perform or abstain from the demanded action. This important writ was one of numerous contributions by Sir Edward Coke, who, as Chief Justice of the King's Bench, offered the 1615 decision in James Bagg's case. That case involved James Bagg, an elected town official who was removed from his position by the town. Bag sued the town in King's Bench. Sir Coke issued the writ under the King's name since he felt that the town unjustly removed Bag from that position. Later in the 1700s, two Lord Chief Justices, John Holt and William Murray, clarified the scope of mandamus when the King's Benches recognized in a few cases that a writ of mandamus would only issue if there was no other adequate remedy. Through decisions of Sir Coke and Lords Holt and Murray, it was well established in England that a writ was issued at the will of the sovereign and not according to the right of a plaintiff. However, when the writ of mandamus was introduced in the United States of America, the writ lost its prerogative features and became a remedy which was available only if a plaintiff demonstrated an entitlement to it and when other remedies would not provide adequate relief. 
The first documented federal case discussing mandamus relief occurred in 1803 in a case of Marbury v. Madison. That case involved William Marbury, who sought a writ of mandamus directing Secretary of State James Madison to issue to him a commission as a justice of the peace. The case was heard before the U.S. Supreme Court. Although Chief Justice John Marshall, who wrote the decision on behalf of the court, ultimately decided the issue against Marbury on constitutional grounds, the Chief Justice noted that although executive branch department heads may exercise constitutional or legal discretion, Madison's refusal to deliver Marbury's commission was illegal since it violated a particular duty assigned by law to Madison and it would be proper for a court in such situations to order the government official to issue the commission. Chief Justice Marshall's adoption of the concept of mandamus affirmed the influence of English common law in the judiciary of its former colony. In modern federal jurisprudence, a writ of mandamus is available to petitioners. In fact, the United States Supreme Court in the 1976 case of Kerr versus United States District Court defined that although a writ of mandamus is a drastic remedy that is appropriate only in extraordinary situations, a writ of mandamus must be issued when a court has exceeded the lawful exercise of its prescribed jurisdiction or refused to exercise its authority when it is its duty to do so. Later, in 2004, the Supreme Court in Cheney v. United States District Court established a three-prong requirement before a writ of mandamus could be issued. Those requirements are as follows. First, the petitioner must establish that there are no other adequate means of obtaining the relief sought. Second, the petitioner must prove that his right to the issuance of the writ is clear and indisputable. Third and lastly, the issuing court, in the exercise of its discretion, must be satisfied that a writ is appropriate under the circumstances. The evolution of writ of mandamus is a fascinating probe into the influence of English common law onto the jurisprudence of the United States of America. The exacting criteria upon which a petition must satisfy before a court issues a writ of mandamus translates into appellate courts rarely granting such relief, especially to correct acts within the discretion of a district court judge. So, it'll be really interesting to see how the Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit, in the Flynn case, respond to Judge Sullivan's decision-making regarding the Justice Department's motion to dismiss. You have just listened to the History, Law, and Justice podcast with your host, Michael Buckner. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions or feedback on this episode, Michael's contact information is included in the description box. Citations to sources used to prepare this episode are also listed in the description box. Finally, don't forget to click on the link to subscribe to receive the next episode of this podcast. Remember to let history serve as your roadmap for future success.